Hello everyone and welcome to my 2020 walkthrough of how to use TurboTax. So this is for tax year 2020, which means we're preparing our taxes for April 2021. That's when our tax deadline is due. Uh, and this is what our 2020 TurboTax software looks like. And so I'm going to do a walkthrough of kind of how to use TurboTax this year. And with some new COVID benefits coming out, uh, I'm going to highlight especially those areas and kind of glance over the other ones. So if you get value out of this video at any time, uh, I just ask that you give this uh, video a thumbs up and please consider subscribing as I make a lot of videos on Canadian tax and personal finance and investing and all that. So welcome to the video. As you can see on the top left here, uh, I already have a tax refund. I've already entered in a lot of information. So I'm gonna try to speed through this video and this is gonna kind of help you just show you where things are so you can go in and do it yourself. If you drop it down, I can see here for this example, I can look at more of a detailed uh, summary of why I'm in a refund position. I see my total income and deductions and my bottom line there. But when you start the tax return, this is going to be the page uh, that you start with here, uh, asking about your marital status. And TurboTax is gonna ask you a number of questions uh, regarding your personal situation to help you fill out your taxes properly. So uh, this stuff I'm gonna just go over. It's all pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna fill it in based on your personal information. So your marital status and if you have dependents, and it's going to go over your personal information. So all this is going to be straightforward for you. If you have any questions, you can get information uh, online on the Canada website. This is new here for NetFile. So if you're going to be filing your taxes, it's going to ask you for an access code. And this access code is going to be available on your 2019 notif Notice of Assessment. It's a eight-character code. And you can find it on that NOA and enter that information there. You don't need to put that in. Um, but you can as an additional security feature. So that is new this year. Um, and if you have that security code, you have your 2019 notice of assessment, enter in that information there. It's gonna ask you some more questions, again, uh, that you can go through based on your personal information. It's gonna ask you about your province of residence. It's gonna ask you if you had a change in residency. So if you are new Canadian, chances are your residency has changed, or if you're leaving Canada, uh, again, same things apply, but we're assuming a basic tax return. Then you're going to enter in your contact information, um, put all the information there. Again, make sure it's applicable for you. Then it's going to ask you a couple other questions here uh, regarding your tax situation. And I'm just going to hit continue. It's going to summarize it all for you. You're going to review it, make sure everything looks good. And then you're on into actually preparing the tax return. So here it's just going to tell you some things that are new this year regarding uh, the COVID changes and some new tax laws. Um, and so it's kind of walking you through some stuff that you can be aware of. This here, you have CRA My Account set up. Uh, you can get the slips that are already in your account and put them straight onto your return to save some time and some data entry. I'm going to skip that though. All right, so here we go. Let's get the biggest refund possible. It's going to, after we finish the tax profile, you can see here, I'm now entering my income section. And then as I go across, I'll go through all of these things before I actually file. And then there's a bunch of stuff down here on the left hand side that I can just jump to. As you can see, I have some, some down arrows for drop downs, so I can click and drill into those and kind of hop right into that section. But for now, I'm going to let TurboTax take me there. So most of you guys are gonna have a T4. I've already entered a T4, but you're gonna, you would hit add T4 for yourself and get into that information. And then once you're done, you're gonna hit done with T4 slips to move on. I've entered it to save time, so I'm just gonna hit edit to drill into there. You're gonna see this is this information section where you enter in your T4 information. You can see the boxes, and those boxes are going to match the boxes on your T4 slip. So you're simply just matching the boxes to these boxes and entering in that information. So I've put in a dummy T4 here. A big thing here that's new for 2020, boxes 57 down to 60. Uh, you should all have this information. This is employment income during the times in which you were eligible potentially for CERB. And so that helps Canada decide if you actually did indeed qualify for CERB payments. Also, one thing that's new down here is, will you claim employment expenses for working at home due to COVID for income on this T4? And you're gonna have to answer yes or no. I'm gonna put yes, uh, so that way we can show you how that looks. 
And so that is how you finish uh, the T4 and you enter as many as you have. Next, uh, a lot of you guys might have a T5. So T5, especially if you have like banking interest or something, um, that would be here. So I put in T5 here as an example. I put in some dividends and interest from the bank. Uh, but again, very simple. If you have a T5, you're gonna match the box numbers to the box numbers here and complete that. And you're gonna do that for all of your T slips, okay? Now I entered in, it's popping up T4A for now, but I entered in the uh, T4 and I said that I had um, benefits related to my T4, my work from home things. So to get there, I'm just gonna skip here for now and I'm gonna go over to the employment expenses section. And this is where you're gonna enter in your uh, work from home COVID expenses that were related to that T4. So you can read here, it's just talking about the new work from home uh, office expense. So I'm gonna say, yes, I'm eligible. Did you receive a T2200 from your employer? I'm gonna put no, but if you did, you would put yes. And then it's gonna ask you basically the questions to make sure that you qualify for the work from home uh, expenses. So I'm gonna fill that out. And then I'm gonna choose here, if you didn't receive that T2200 form, you're gonna go flat rate. If you went and you got the other form, you can go detailed. Uh, but here I'm gonna enter the number of days that I worked from home due to COVID. I'm gonna put 200 as that is the maximum you can do. It says maximum of $400 at $2 a day. So I'm gonna enter that information there. And you can see actually my refund on the top left uh, changed. And so here's some other expenses that uh, are not related to me regarding GST, HST rebate. So I'm just gonna click through that. So now it's taking me back to my income summary and if I scroll down, uh, it won't show the expense in this section because this is for income, but it will show it later on, I'll show you here. But I'm gonna go back to the T-slip section and carry on where I left off. So the T4A is typically where you're going to be getting the uh, CERB payments or CRB payments. So I put here Government of Canada. And if you scroll down, Keep scrolling. You're gonna see COVID related benefits and each box is there for you and it even shows you like CERB, CRB. And so I put in some information there. Uh, chances are if you receive the CRB box 202 uh, that you also had some income tax deducted. And so I put 10% of that. I put in box 22 that there was $100. Obviously you would put uh, what you had in your specific slip and go from there. So I'm gonna put done with that. You also may have had a T4E slip to report that uh, CERB or CRB income and it's the same thing, just you're entering in T4E instead of T4A. So I'm just gonna skip over that. So that's my income summary. It looks good. Here it's just asking me if I wanna upgrade, I don't. Now it's gonna take me to my RSP section. So you're gonna enter in your RSP deduction limit and that's gonna come from your notice of assessment, shows you where you can find it, and you enter in that information there. If you have RSP contributions, this is where you would enter it. So typically you'll get a slip uh, telling you how much you contributed to your RSP, and you would enter in that information here, and that's gonna lower your taxable income, which is nice. So I've already done that, I put $1,000 of RSP, and I moved on. Now it's gonna take me to an optimizer, and I'm just gonna skip over that. It's basically an upsell. So now it's showing me the summary again. Uh, I contribute $1,000, and so I'm making that $1,000 deduction. It's just loading. Now we're going to the deduction section here. Boom, boom. It's taking me to a donations profile. I'm just gonna skip over that, say there was no donations. I think I put that I had donations. Now it's gonna to talk to me about medical expenses. In order to claim the medical expenses, my total must be greater than $1,390.50 medical expenses if you are claiming it. Saying, do you wanna claim the medical expenses? I'm putting no. Tuition, now if you can get this from your notice of assessment. 
Uh, if you have any unused tuition carry forwards, I put yes and I put that amount there. If you had any student loan interest, if you're paying it off, this is where you'd enter in that information for the years. And it's showing me the summary there of my tuition. And then once I'm done, it'll take me back to the summary. And if I've skipped something, I can always hit add up here and it will take me to the section where I want to go. Or I can drill down over here on this section and enter in uh, the information there. I can jump right into it. But I can see here now my employment expenses has popped up at that four hundred dollars and my RSP of a thousand. And I'm also having the social benefits repayment of one thousand dollars. So I'm going to show you uh, what that looks like in one moment here. But uh, as you can see, my total income was 48750 And now my net income, what I'm being taxed on, is 46350 So I'm going to scroll down here as it drills down further into the taxes. Now it's taking me to the provincial side. I'm going to skip over this because every province is different. So I put Ontario, so it's going to ask me Ontario Pacific questions. Uh, so whatever your province is, this will guide you through it. It's quite straightforward. But I'm going to go to the review sec section now to uh, kind of show you guys some more COVID related things. So this, again, it's going to go over a summary of everything. And if it looks good, uh, then you can continue on. It's going to go over and ask you if they're, um, it's going to check for accuracy basically. So if they notice anything wrong, uh, they would highlight that here for you. Uh, now it looks like everything is good from TurboTax's point of view. Just because TurboTax says it's good doesn't necessarily mean it is. Now it's going to ask you to certify. So you want to make sure that your SIN and your date of birth and everything is correct. Uh, this is an example. So I'm going to just not certify that because that is a dummy uh, person and social insurance number. But what I want to look at here is this bottom line tax summary. So once you certify, you're going to get over here and you're going to see these numbers. And here it's going to show you my bottom line refund 2,622 shows me I'm going to have a GST HST credit. Potentially I can review a detailed tax summary. Um, but if I scroll a little bit further down, says here in blue that you may notice that your refund or tax owing has decreased or incre increased compared to prior years. This may be due to the Canada recovery benefit repayment that was calculated as part of the return. You are required to repay this COVID-19 benefit since you earn more than 38,000. I had put on my income that I had earned, uh, I think 45,000 on my T4. So it makes sense. For Trevor, that's my test example, the Canada Recovery Benefit Repayment is $1,000. So that was that social benefit repayment that I highlighted earlier, and that is getting factored into my taxes. So because I, we've, we've talked in my previous videos about the clawback for the recovery benefits, uh, TurboTax is calculating that for us and factoring it into our taxes. So um, I believe if I went to back to the deductions, Summary here, yeah, social benefit repayment, uh, $1,000. So that is how you use TurboTax. And so once you're done uh, going through the review, you'll then get to file on the left-hand side here. And that information will get net filed. Uh, it'll ask you again to enter in your, um, your access code from that notice of assessment if you want. Um, but that is how you do it and you net file it and then you're done for the year. So um, this is for 2020 taxes. If you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments below. And again, if you got value out of this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and it just lets me know that you appreciate this video and helps get this video out there to more people. So thanks again for watching. Uh, I'm Nick from Nick's Taxes and of course, happy taxing.